Look up the list of the most misunderstood foods in the world, and fermented shark is probably on it. But here in the west of Iceland, it is a regional delicacy. It's Greenland shark that's been laboriously fermented, dried and cured. And it's been done by one family in this area for hundreds of years. We're here to find out what it tastes like. The Greenland shark is the most toxic shark in the world. Fresh uh, meat, you would get very sick. Then a little bit more, you could probably go blind. And then uh, death after that. So what exactly does it take to make it safe to eat? We met with Gurdjian Hildebrandsson. He's running his family business of shark curing here in Bjarnoren. I've been eating this shark since before I got teeth. I've been doing a curing process probably since I was 10. So this is just uh, all my life. It's uh, just shark, shark, shark. We don't catch them ourselves, not anymore. Now we buy them from these big trolling boats. We catch the shark accidentally, but my family used to catch them and hunt them. Gurdjian cures about 60 sharks a year. From fishing to cube, the whole process takes six months. The meat is first fermented in cold storage rooms like this one. Next, I'm going to open it up and you're going to put your head in it. Okay. You're going to inhale <laughs> and then you're going to explain the smell you feel. Okay, yeah, shall we, yeah, shall I'm we, ready. Shall we check it out? I'm ready, okay. So. Stick my head in. Yeah, here we go. It's, um, I, I dye my hair <laughs> and it's literally like bleach. It's hair, it's hair bleach, right? Okay, yeah. yeah, like hair, like yeah. hair dye. Oh, wow. So, oh, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it is very strong. It's really strong. Because it's a closed unit. You know what it is? It's hair bleach and stilton. We are working with similar bacteria, like when you're, when, when you're doing uh, cheese. So that's why? Let's check this out. Oh, you can see the oozing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can also... This is like... It does not smell as intense as when we walked in. No. So this can stay here for some while longer. So here we have the thinner pieces. Yeah. And we make these handles in the skin for grabbing them, lifting them up, mm -hmm. hanging them up. So these are the, the thinner pieces. And under here, we have the fillet. So this is how that's, that's much, much thicker pieces. Mm -hmm. And he has white meat. He does not have a fat layer. He mm -hmm. has white meat. And it's very important to have the skin on mm -hmm. because the meat is so loose itself that if it's no skin, then it's just, uh, then the meat just basically stretch. The thinner pieces, after the process, the meat becomes sort of red or brown. And we call that Glear Haukart. Glear Haukart. Yeah. And the meat is it's, it's more it's more chewy and salty. And then we have the fillet. That stays white. The fillet we call Skir Haukart. Skir. Named after the, the milk product, oh, yeah. Skir. Yeah, we love Skir. What, what is the liquid that's coming off then? And Ammonia. Why? Water, like there, there is a lot of water in the meat. The Greenland shark, he has much more water in him than other fishes or other sharks. So it's uh, ammonia. What is that doing in the scientific process of it? Because so, it's poisonous when it's fresh? Yeah, the Greenland shark is the most toxic shark in the world. And the Greenland shark is a deep ocean, cold ocean shark. So Icelanders, they first started fishing them for the liver. And they used the oil from a liver, so for the first 200 years when they were fishing them, they had to throw the meat away. They couldn't use it, so it was a big waste of meat. And in Iceland, in isolated areas, this was a, it was a big waste. So 400 years ago, probably accidentally, they discovered a process to use the meat. What would happen if I took a bite of that now? What would happen to me? Would I now go it's, blind it's or? that far, far in the fermentation that you would be fine. Right. But before, fresh uh, meat, something small, you would get very sick. Yeah. Then a little bit more, you could probably go blind, and then uh, death after that. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> great, I will not be taking a bite yeah. of that. So this, this part of the process, is this the most important part to get the taste of it, or? This, this, this basically does everything. Uh, it makes the meat not toxic, it's preserved, 
after this you can eat it. It's not toxic, but the drying process is just to get a better texture in the meat because it's just so wet and moisty. Yeah. And it's very important that these boxes, they have these gaps on them, so the liquid can, can leak from it. And also for oxygen to, to get in because the meat it needs, to, needs to breathe. There are chemical changes that are happening. Yeah that are making the meat uh, untoxic. First, people didn't know this was a chemical process. It was an accident. Now this is a chemical process and we are, there are a lot of um, interesting things that we are yeah, even still discovering. Yeah. Uh, it's also different after where the shark has been, in what depth, in what temperature he was caught. It's different after what, what chemicals are high or, or low in them. So in these boxes, the meat loses about around 30%. So it loses a lot of weight here. And then in the drying process, it loses like uh, 50, 70%. So total use of meat is around 8%. What happens to the ammonia when it drains? I mean, is it, is it okay to be stuck? I mean, you've got like, I've got boots on and you've got little <laughs> sandals with some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The ammonia is, the liquid here is, that's fine. We could drink it. I won't though. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure that's you a want cure some. for something. You want I, some, maybe? No. Uh, no. no. <laughs> One shark will give from 30 to 40 pieces of fillet. The meat ferments for six to nine weeks in the wooden boxes, then is hung outside for six months to fully dry out. To know if it's ready, mm. we check the texture. And these are all, like, good. They are, the, the, the texture is fine. We don't want it too hard and not too mushy. And, and then we have this one here. This one is not uh, stiff enough. So he needs more time, but these here are ready. Here you see the skin. You should. Oh, wow. It's like a. You know when these people have really <laughs> terrible like 1970s walls, yeah, where they. Yeah, yeah. I know what <laughs> like, yeah. I know what it, yeah, it's like sandpaper. <laughs> But yeah, this but is, I mean, actually, it's really rough. This it's was pretty. used for, uh, in Iceland, this was used for sandpaper. And these points, if you look look closely, you see the points in the skin, yeah. they, they, they grow in one direction. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so these points, they, they grow down with his body. So when he swims, he gets this sort of thin layer of air around him. It's always air around him. So it's easier for him to swim and to get faster, and it also works like a, gives him a little bit more insulation in a cold ocean. It's like the meatiest fish I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Here we have a piece of the fillet, and in the drying, the piece gets this dried crust around it. But you see here, when I slice it open, that he still has this beautiful white color at the inside. And here the meat is just ready to eat. So there is never nothing added to this meat in the, in the process. There is no cooking, there is no smoking, like nothing at all. Just, it's just natural process from the beginning till the end. And then if I, you see how smoothly it's cut. And then you take this here. Thank you. It looks like ham. Yeah. And then I'll have one also. Cheers. Skull. <laughs> Skull. Okay. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that actually doesn't. It's the aftertaste is kicking in now. Yeah. <laughs> and now you feel it. It's coming. It's coming up in your nose. And then it's doing what what we wanted to do. We wanted to give us like a like a kick. It's mm. supposed to be strong. I can taste the. Uh, the ammonia kind of smell now. Mm -hmm. um, at first it was just like chewing a piece of ham. Yeah. And then like, you know, the texture of it in your mouth and then the, the aftertaste. And then it's actually like stinging my, sting my tongue, stinging the back of my tongue. Mm -hmm. Do you ever, do you ever get over that? It's just, it's, it's like eating I, bread to you now. Everything you feel is probably uh, 10 times more than I'm, what I'm, what I feel. For me, I kind of, I, I, I sort of miss it, but I, I know good shark from a bad one. Two sharks who arrive here together, they go through the process together. Yeah. Uh, after the process, they taste similar, but not the same. It is the, not even amount of ammonia maybe in them or, or salt or other chemicals that are, that are different. So that's why they uh, 
don't taste the same. Yeah, you can taste taste the smell of it, but it's um that really kind of like rich Stilton cheese like mm -hmm. hits the back of your tongue mm -hmm. and it's just the size of your tongue and you don't <laughs> don't think that's ever gonna go away maybe but you want some more I'll have a little bit more yeah have a little bit more I mean I think that I'm, my tongue's just used to this now <laughs> I'm a shark convert um it's amazing though how much of it is in the smell yeah it's just yeah, yeah. so would you recommend eat it before smelling it just yeah. go down the yeah. hatch yeah. yeah yeah it tastes much better than it smells Okay. I'll have another one also. <laughs> right, I'm just going to try to chew this bit. <laughs> so I do you, actually, you... it's the texture now. <laughs> I think at first it was the smell and then the taste. No, it's a texture. It's like, um, gone into almost like a gelatinous kind of, um, texture in my mouth. I think it's because I've just like mast masticated it so much in my mouth. <laughs> just, yeah. the there we go, the, I'll get the, over it. The, mm. the second one was also a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, the second one was the kicker, yeah. <laughs> the shark does have a reputation internationally. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? It's good. This is not for everybody, you know. Uh, people go in two parts, even Icelanders. Either you like it or you don't. But I recommend everybody at least to give it a try. Today, this is eaten like a snack mm. for special occasions. But before, this was eaten like with a meal, like for something extra. And this is so healthy that you can't eat too much. It's often the shark was eaten like with a food that was like on the limit of being good or bad, or probably bad, because he helps the digestion. So there's a chemical, chemical company in Iceland who analyzes food. And according to them, the shark is the healthiest food that is made in Iceland. And I, I just, uh, you know, like when you have a, a really sh strong shot of alcohol mm -hmm. and you get that kind of like burning. Yeah, similar. Do you, do, yeah, that's what I'm getting at the moment. Is that quite a common thing? I just, guess so. Yeah. I yeah. guess so. It's just like I kind of feel it in my heart and my soul now. <laughs> it is strong and we, that, we, we want it strong. Want it even stronger? Gudrun made me try some fermented shark cubes dipped in Icelandic schnapps. How much is too much to put in here? <laughs> Today, this is called brennivin, which would be translated in English like a burning wine. <laughs> and this used to be called, uh, in Iceland, svartidauði, or which would be black death. So you let it stay there for maybe 20 seconds, okay. something like that. Just we, like we are marinating the shark. Now it changes a little bit to like a, maybe a little like a licorice uh, mm. flavor. Yeah, that's really licorice. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly how it tastes. That's so, really nice. Yeah. This is your, I mean, this isn't your personal supply bottle. But no. Yeah. <laughs> What's also good is to have a piece of the jar and piece of the rye bread, the Icelandic rye bread. And then, of course, you know, the shark on its own. Yeah. It's, it's the best. You just love the shark so much. This is my grandfather shark fishing boat. He used to catch sharks and other, other fishes in this boat. The boat's name is Silden, and which is herring in English. And his first registered 1860. Uh, my grandfather bought this boat 1929, when he was 19 years old. And then he had been working on this boat at least since he was uh, 14. It's a they, proper family business. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a, like, Shark has been involved with my family for 600 years, I guess. Wow. And how did they used to catch it then? Yeah. So, they used hooks. Mm. This here, this is from my grandfather's shark fishing set. Mm. This is very old. And the chain had to be at least three meters. And they used um, uh, usually a seal meat or a, or, a, or a seal fat for a bait for the, for the hook. And this was maybe 100 meters down and they could feel when the shark was testing the bait. So they start to tease him until the shark swallows the bait. I mean, it's a big boat. How big is a shark? This, this boat is around eight meters, and the Greenland shark is um, usually he's from three meters till maybe five meters long. This jaw here, here you go. <laughs> this is from maybe five, five meter long shark. Wow. And, That's massive. Yeah, and this one is then from, I would, get, I would guess, four, four meters. 
And are these, I mean, would these hurt humans or? So the Greenland shark, he lives so deep mm. that he, he's, he's not in our swimming waters. And this is his lower jaw. And you see here, they're always growing a new set of teeth here. And the teeth, they grow up and he changes his teeth uh, around every three weeks. They just flip over and the old ones, they just fall off. So he's got somewhere around, I don't know, 4,000 set of teeth over his lifetime or, or more. And this is his skin, but that is very interesting. Like you can stroke the skin one way, but it's harder to stroke it the other. Oh yeah, there's some more resistance one yeah, way. It's yeah. like sandpaper. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so this is just uh, like uh, all my life. Uh, just shark, shark, shark. <laughs>